Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on the Waves of Communication channel. I'm super happy that you're joining me today and if you've been on the language facilitation journey for a little while or you're new, this video might be the game changer to change your whole trajectory about how you have been doing things and about how you're going to do things. So. I'm really glad that you're here today, either live or on the replay. And if this is the first time you're joining me, you're, you have the best super welcome from me. My name is Marcy Melzer. I'm an intuitive, a speech language pathologist, and a language facilitation coach and consultant. Here on the Waves of Communication channel, we equip and empower parents every single week with videos, mindset videos on Wednesday, and real practical tips on Thursday, and live Q&A opportunities. Here is where you can become equipped and empowered to be the language facilitator for your child's life. And we've got a really, really important topic that's going on today that I'm gonna be talking about, and it's this, it's signs of progress. And the reason that I'm calling it signs of progress is because I think that there is a, a dupe going on in the world right now for families who have kids that are late talking. And it is this idea of data-driven progress, of I can document progress in your child. And in fact, I can show you how this progress is manifesting in your life. And they need these data and these things, these progress reports to get paid. So that's how they can flavor this progress. And what I'm gonna do on this video right here today, in addition to talking about other videos I have to recommend and the astrology and all of that stuff, that stuff's also important, but this fact, this idea of what you are determining as progress, what you've been told is progress, what you are feeling is progress, I wanna shine a big light on that. At right now we have just entered leo season we're right on the door knocking out of this watery emotional time of cancer season moving into leo season where i cannot hold back anymore i need to let you know shine the light on what is happening in the world and might be what's happening in your house and what we're going to be talking about is this the difference between aba and natural language facilitation is in the results so you're going to be able to identify as a result of what I tell you on this video, what kind of results you're getting, okay? So the first thing we're going to talk about is the result progress from the angle of A, um, which is defining progress as created by control, exchange, if you do this, I'll give you this, ABA, which is all about what that is, questioning, testing, prompting, and reinforcement where the environment, this is the key that talks about this level of progress that is achieved when the environment is controlled by the facilitator. So the issue here is, I'm just seeing there are comments. So what I wanna do here is show you on this video, I've got five angles of documented progress that will be written on reports and show you what to do. One through four is. Number five is how you consider that. So let's get into them. Number one, the progress here is that life gets easier, right? It gets easier in your life when you use these prompt-based strategies because the child stops resisting whatever you're wanting them to do, and they fall under the control of the structured environment and recommendations set up by accommodations set up by the facilitator to create a successful outcome. One of the families in my program just took her child on vacation to an indoor water park where there are many, many rules. She did not know all of the rules in this water park before she went. She did all of her research for everything she could and over and over and over because she was there and she, taking the complete responsibility for her situation, she had a lot of failures. 
in that she experienced a lot of struggle in her environment because she was controlling the whole thing. And while they got through the vacation a lot easier than maybe they would have if they hadn't, she hadn't done all this work to control the environment for her child, that's how they did their vacation. Okay, I'm just letting you know. That's one way to see progress. When you completely control and accommodate and facilitate the environment so your child is goes along with it. He get, goes through the flow. He does what he needs to do. Stops resisting. You don't have resistant behavior so your life feels easier. Okay? This is one form of progress. It feels better. I know it feels better because this is what people comment on their videos. My child get, went through a whole vacation super easily, right? Okay, now let's look at number two. Fewer unwanted communication behaviors. You don't have meltdowns as many anymore. The child is because the child is kept focusing on their wants and needs as they are anticipated by the facilitator and offered as a reward for calm compliance, right? That's the whole deal. You don't get your reward unless you're calm and listening and give me eye contact and do what you do and all that stuff. So the kids learn, all right, I've got to be calm and compliant to get my reward. Because remember, they are focused on the reward. They're not focused on on getting the job done, they're focused on the reward and they're calmly sitting there compliant and do what you want them to do. So the data ticks up. All those ABA things, the programs get done, the kids start matching, the kids start doing all these things because they learn really quickly that if they don't sit and be calm, they can't get their reward. In fact, some people use escape from work as a reward, right? So the kid will work so that they can get a break, right? This is what happens here. All right, so now let's look at number three, version of progress. Jobs get done more completely and accurately. They get, they follow the thing, they meet the goals, they meet the programs. According to the facilitator's expectations, we need him to do these things in this way, this quickly, this many times, blah, 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 because they are guiding every step of the action with a verbal or physical prompt. This kid is going to brush their teeth if I've got to hold their hand and make them do every single tooth. But again, they're com calm and compliant because they know if they let you guide them, prompt them, take them through their job, they'll eventually get their reward. So they let you, they allow you to prompt and guide and move them and do them. What do they don't stop resisting that stuff? And because they allow you to basically puppet them through this activity, it gets done because they allow you to facilitate, to, to not facilitate, to do it with them, you know, guide it through them, somehow make them do it. They allow you to make them do things. They are compliant and obedient, okay? Now, Number four, what happens with these kids, the progress that you see and is documented by your ABA therapist is that the kids are learned, they're talking. These kids are saying words. They imitate or produce speech or individual sounds eventually after you ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, ah, uh, ooh them enough and give them treats afterwards. They will start to imitate and produce speech or complete tasks even more quickly and on cue. Boom, buddy, boom, buddy, boom, buddy, boom. Oh man, he's worked through those programs no problem at all. Does them super fast, right? But they can't do it independently. They can only do it. They can only say these words. They can only imitate these sounds when they are in this controlled environment. They can't do it on their own either with without someone else prompting or guiding them and do it, right? Because remember, they allow you to guide them through this, so they allow you to do it. And they will imitate and produce things for you because they want the reward, you guys. It's all about the reward with these things. Okay, number five, the parents are exhausted quickly, right? This is what happens. You're exhausted super fast because you can't sustained and you can't sustain the effort needed to keep control of every area of this child's life. Just like what happened to the mom who took her kid on vacation to the water park. She 
There is no way it is not sustainable for you to accommodate and control everything around you. The parents who are angry and exhausted because other people won't help their kid the way they help their kid. Okay. That's the parents who fall into this category because you're the, you are responsible. You have taken and shouldered on the responsibility to prompt, guide, create, accommodate, make this kid get this outcome through your efforts through yours. You controlled it and you did it. You made that kid do it. Congratulations. You made those results happen. If you're here and I promise if you're in that role, you are beat. You're exhausted. Your house is a mess. You can't keep up with everything because it's impossible, impossible to do everything yourself, right? That's why on this channel, you know, you burn out or degrade your intervention or maybe just quit altogether. And just because you blame it on your kid, he's too broken. I can't make him do it anymore. I'm too exhausted. He's too whatever. It's just too much for us, right? Because it's not sustainable. That's why those ABA people have you keep coming back and add more hours. No, it's not sustainable in three hours a week. We've got to have 10 hours a week. It's not sustainable in 10 hours a week. We've got to add 20 hours a week because it's not sustainable, this prompt controlled progress that you are paying money for and other people are justifying insurance payment, government payment through this progress that you see, okay? So now let's move on and talk about progress B through the lens of creation, connecting with the late talker and offering collaborative experiences that are not, they're pre-organized, but they're not pre-planned. Every second of them's planned. You just know what you're doing and you're connected with the late talker and you solve all the problems. You do the planning, you do the setup, you do the activity, you do the cleanup and you process what happened in the learning afterwards. You do all of that together with the late talker, with language facilitation, right? Collaborative experiences from got to end with functional speech models that you're talking about the experience from beginning to end, with daily activities that you already do, you already have planned, you gotta get up, you gotta get dressed, you gotta brush your teeth, you gotta go to wherever you gotta go, you gotta do clean your whatever you gotta clean, you gotta cook whatever you gotta, you gotta do all that stuff anyway, right? And this is how I teach parents to get progress. And this is the difference. So when people tell me that they're exhausted because they're working so hard on their language facilitation journey, there's something from that previous list that you are doing to exhaust yourself. Let's talk about the difference. Number one, life gets easier because the child is independent and trustworthy. After facilitators teach independence and functional skills in a cooperative manner, there is no hand over handing, brushing teeth and language facilitation. We model these things side by side. In fact, in the next video, I'm not going to give you all the details here because this video would go on forever and ever. That's why tomorrow's episode is going to be all about the strategies you need to use to facilitate independent speech, right? But today we're going to talk about the difference and why life feels so much easier for everybody when not just the child is doing it, but they're doing it independently without you needing to be there. And you can trust them to do their best. Is it going to be perfect? No, it's not going to be as perfect as when you do it for them, of course. But again, it's about your expectation here. If you expect this child to join you and learn with you cooperatively, you will see this progress evolve. Number two, fewer unwanted communication behaviors, tantrums, meltdowns, manipulation, right? All that stuff decreases when you intervene both times. However, this time it's happening because the child is able to share their ideas with speech. And after their parents teach them the power of planning and negotiation, not just how to get what you want, but how to get what, how everybody gets what they want, how you are giving of yourself everything, including your lifeblood, the food out of your mouth to your kids. So everybody, it's win, 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 win. When you teach your kids how to get win, win situations through these things, and it's not your way or the highway, you'll see better, right? 
you'll see fewer unwanted behaviors because the kids just replace them with the things that you teach them. Number three, jobs get done with greater care and accuracy, just like when you make kids do things. But in this case, it's because you have given the responsibility. You expect this late talker to pick up the responsibility of self-learning, right? It's incorporated in the teaching when you're collaborative. You do your part, I do my part. Maybe at the beginning, you have to do a lot more because you're better at it and they're your helper. Eventually, those roles change and the child becomes more independent to the point where they can teach other kids that same thing, including speech, including speech. A lot of late talkers are now facilitating speech with their younger siblings and their friends at preschool who are later talking than them, right? These kids will not only pick up and become independently and do things well, they want to do things perfectly, but they know they can't. But they will only try harder and harder and harder to get better and better and better when they accept responsibility because that's what we do on this. You don't assume the responsibility to make anything happen in language facilitation, right? That's why the kids will pick it up. If you put it down, they will pick it up. But the problem is in that first scenario, you never put it down. You're always in control, right? And these kids want control. They'll fight you for control. That's why they're still having tantrums in between your little sessions where you control everything. Because in that case, they're trying to regain control. They don't want to be controlled by you. Number four, kids start talking naturally. Because facilitators constantly demonstrate how to use the target vocabulary, the words that these kids already know, in functional phrases that the lay talker finds useful for their independence, right? So they start saying words, but it's not when you want them to say it. It's when they want to say it. So it doesn't happen on the fly, on cue, on whatever, like those other times. So you can feel, remember, there's a difference here. Maybe you really like hearing your kid perform. I've got parents in my program who won't stop questioning and prompting their kids because they love hearing them talk. Because they didn't hear them talk for four or five years, and now every word that comes out of their mouth sounds so sweet to these parents, they can't help themselves from prompting. Could that be you? Because if you are, you're holding your child back from learning how to talk naturally. Okay, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Kids start talking naturally because facilitators constantly demonstrate how to use the target vocabulary. All right, number five, and this is the big key difference to know which level of progress trajectory you are on. Language facilitator parents, they sustain interaction in a regular way. They can because they have fun every day. They only plan things that feel easy, happy, safe, and fun. They don't plan anything that feels too hard for them or their kids. They understand that if it isn't fun, it isn't fun. And it's a waste of time if you're struggling with this, trying to make anybody do anything. You might be tempted to want to hear them perform on target or do what you want when you want. But there are ways to facilitate that. Independence, responsibility, right? And then don't you want to have your child be independent and responsible versus obedient and compliant? the actual results you want to get. Not only that, but they're flexible and intuitively guided. So you don't know exactly how these things are going to go every day. You just know during this period of time, you're going to put on your language facilitator hat and do your best. And in between you parent and love on this kid and go to work and pay the bills and fill your car with gas and clean the house and do all the other stuff that you have to do because you can sustain this and the child is developing while you are sustaining your whole life full of busy stuff because there you go you can do it and it's not impossible parents all over the world are doing it it's a choice this is a choice ladies and gentlemen okay so i see that there are some comments coming in Great. So, um, yeah, see, reward system, I don't like it. Reward systems work wonders, but they only get you 
your guided progress. Works wonders for who? You might be seeing this progress. Like I said, progress A or progress B, it's up to you. If you want to be exhausted and see it break down and dip into the dips before you get up into the ups again, then you keep doing the one. You keep doing progress A. Keep doing more ABA, more control, more whatever. Eventually, your late talker is going to rebel against it and finally stop wanting to be controlled. And then you're going to have a fight on your hands. Okay? Reward systems work wonders for rewarders. They don't teach kids anything except to be compliant and obedient. And if you are all about a compliant and whatever obedient parent, that which you want, an obedient child versus an inquisitive, curious, Einstein-level genius child who has stuff in their own mind that they want to share, but your control is holding it back, right? It's not cool. It's not cool. Look, at I love this. We had astrological events into notes in our data. I love that. That's super interesting. Let's talk about the astrology just really quick. We've got the sun moving into Leo. We are do Western astrology here on the channel. I live in the United States. So um, I know that the sun is shifting right now away from the very emotional time. We also had a very, very impactful full moon last week. Oh boy, was it a biggie. We had the full moon in Sagittarius, which is I got to go, I got to do, I got to whatever, lit up by the moon, the sun in um in Cancer, which is very watery and emotional, right on top of Pluto. That moon was right on top of Pluto. And that's true no matter where, what kind of astrology you study. So a lot of people could be making big, big changes. I know in my personal world and in the clients that are working with me in my program, they are quitting these prompt-based things anymore because they're exhausted. They're exhausted from trying to make their kids do things every day. You cannot make kids do anything can't make kids do anything. Here's somebody who says yes. All right. So for today, I have three videos that I have pulled off of the language facilitation library that I have created on the YouTube channel. There are more than 500 videos on the YouTube channel. And this is the top five video, three videos that I have for you this week on the channel. And um, the links to these videos are in the description box below. So you can watch them for more practical tips. And then tomorrow we're going to be digging into it even more. The first video that I have for you is this one. I have shared it in recent weeks. There is no joke. Prompt dependence and prompt avoidance are the two biggest blockages to natural spoken language. The, the easiest things that you can control starting today in your household with zero investment whatsoever is what you can do with these three videos. And then if you really want to dig in and get into the workbook and all of that, once you understand these philosophies, you can start using these strategies today. Here's the second one, practical strategies. How to give a prompting for better results. If it isn't fun, it isn't fun. These are the strategies in this video that will help you shift results A into results B, okay? Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about more. And here is a, a, an interview. The third video that I have to share with you is an interview with this amazing speech pathologist who lives in Israel, who wrote a book, this double bubble book that she's got here, talks about how it's the, basically the language facilitation zone and why a collaborative experience where you are connected with your child is what she also has found after decades of work in the speech pathology field, working with thousands and thousands of families, that this is what's key. You cannot make these kids do anything. You have to invite and facilitate the speech that you want to see. All right. So the next part of this video, I want to use my language facilitation inspiration cards. So while I was, as usual, before I start the video, I pull out a couple cards just to um, highlight, you know, I think about what kind of messages to put me in the right mindset and they never let me down. Let me show you the first first card that I pulled out today. It's this one. Something has to change, right? It's a car wreck. You can't sustain it. When I pulled this out, I just started laughing because that's it. When you can change 
from Avenue A to Avenue B, just like I showed you in this, you can get the same results with less effort and more sustainability. And here's how you do it. The back of this card says, oops, let me find it. Lost it. Here it is. Oops, nope, that's not it. It's, it's, it's this one. So realistic expectations, right? This is a yellow card, which means that we're tarting our solar plexus chakra. What is it that we are creating, manifesting our, our, our mission, right? What are we doing here? We have to have realistic expectations. It's about control, this area. So parents may feel overwhelmed as a result of taking on the sole responsibility for participation in the late talkers care and teaching. Like you could be, it could have happened during COVID. It could happen because you don't like the, the results the speech therapist is getting. It's because you don't have a speech therapist at all. You know, any of those things could be happening and you decided to be the primary responsibility. And then you decided to go all in to be a therapist an ABA practitioner 24 seven in your house. You watched them do it and then you started prompting and using exchange. I had a mom tell me that she makes her son go to the bathroom by taking away his toy until he goes and then she gives it back to him when he comes back and that's how she gets him to go to the bathroom in the house. So I get it, you guys are doing these things and I promise you there's a better way. There's a better way to get sustainability because if she doesn't get, if she's not there someday when the child's at school or whatever, she's got to have somebody else take her child's thing away from him. Other people aren't going to want to facilitate bathroom time with your kid by taking things away from them. It's not sustainable out in the world in real progress, right? So you have to teach everyone around you how to successfully interact with the late talker so they can help. And it's not, exchange is not necessary. They can't do it like that. They need to teach empowerment and independence. And you've got to be facilitating empowerment and independence at home if you want your kid to be empowered and independent when they go out in the community. If you want your kid to be potty trained so they can go to the school, it's up to you to get them independent in potty training. If you want your kid to pass the test so they can go get into a school or go to a place, it's up to you to teach them how to pass those tests. Not teach the test, but teach your child the independent skills they need. That's why they give those tests. They want to see how independent your child is, how much help do they need? Because at school, they won't hesitate to help your child hand over hand do what they need them to do. Because they've got a whole bunch of kids they got to teach. They make kids do things. This is different. You have the opportunity as the child's primary caregiver to facilitate their lifelong improvement and independence. So work with fewer strategies. Don't overwhelm yourself. Keep it easy that you can sustain, right? One little thing every day, 1% every day for 100 days gets you to 100%. You have to be realistic with yourself and this kid. Can you expect other people to bribe your child to do things like you do at home? No. Do you want that to happen even? I wouldn't. Okay, so you strive for at least one positive action daily and expect no more of yourself. If you do extra, give yourself extra credit. Extra is good, but you have to be sustainable every single day. Something has to change if you are exhausted. Look at this lady. She's exhausted. And because she's exhausted, stuff starts wrecking in her life. If stuff is wrecking in your life, you can't keep your house clean. You can't keep your kids fed. Can't keep food in the house. Can't, 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 can't. Something's got to change. Okay. All right. I, all, I pulled a second card because I was inspired to pull a second card and again, was not disappointed. Here's what the late talkers need. And here's what you can do to help you feel less exhausted. Let's try it my way this time. These lay talkers are super, super smart and they're communicating every single day to tell you what they want and how they want to do things. This kid does not want to kick a soccer ball. She doesn't care about making goals. She likes to see how she can balance it on her head. She's the boss of this instead of other people being the boss of her, trying to control her 
make her do things their way. She's learning and she's happy. Right? And she's doing something cool. Let's see what the back of this card says. Also a yellow card. Be flexible and adapt, ladies and gentlemen. Late talkers are more likely to accept the job and follow the rules, which is what you want in your outcome, when you also offer opportunities to join in exploring and learning about their interests every day. Rules are meant to be understood together as a cooperative experience. And some rules are meant to be bent and broken in the avenue of evolution, right? The old way. We got to do it this way. By the book. This is not by the book. Learning language facilitation is a very intuitive, collaborative, connected process. Okay? So observe the lay talkers play. State that you want to join and initiate the lay talkers act. Imitate their actions, not initiate, imitate. Do what they do, right? Ask for directions. Talk about all the details as you learn. Let them teach you. Let them teach you. We talked about that the other day on a different card. These lay talkers, they want you. They want to be part of the process. They want to be a team player with you. They don't want to be told what to do and controlled through their life. They will rebel. They will. It's not human to do this to people, guys. Humans will result, resist. They will rebel. They will revolt. That's what this moon says, right? If you say, nope, I'm going to double down. I like the results I'm getting. I like when he does things my way. I like when he talks when I ask. I adore my speech therapist. I think that she's amazing with all of her talent and all the kids she's helped. And I want her to help my kid. All of that is plan A. Plan B is I don't really need anybody else to get this started. When I connect with the late talker, I learn how to bring his wisdom, how to facilitate this child, him or her, bringing their wisdom out into the world. This is what we do on the language facilitation process. Okay. So, whew, it was another biggie today, you guys. There's lots of big, big change going on in the world right now. You have choices about how you move forward to help this late talker in your life, this loved one, this brilliant little spark of light and hope for our future. It's your responsibility to help them share their wisdom with the world. You don't want them to be a programmed robot looking like other kids doing what other people do. I promise you'll be happier with this plan B result that you're gonna get. And then if you wanna know, some very specific tips, go ahead and join me tomorrow. Tomorrow's video on the live Q&A is a coaching session where you're going to be able to join me and learn exactly what you need to facilitate independence in not just speech, but everything in your late talker's life. Because we're raising adults here. We're not raising dependent babies who fail tests because they don't have independent skills. Remember, that's why these kids will do everything they can in your controlled environment. And then you go stick them in a party and they shut down. They can't carry it outside of this artificial environment, this artificial progress that you're creating this data. He did it. He did it. Look what he did. Look what he did. Here it is. He listened. He complied. He changed his behavior. He's not talking anymore. All, you can control and manipulate all of that until you can't anymore. It's just not sustainable. So if you're at the beginning of this journey, I hope you take this advice and really make a shift right now. If you're in the middle of it, you're probably feeling the one foot in, one foot out. I don't know. Should I keep doing it? Could this be a different option? I kind of like, because remember, your child is better. It's better. You are seeing different things than you were seeing before. But remember, it's not because the late talker's doing them. It's because everyone around them is controlling them into it. It's not independence. It's compliance and obedience. And while it might feel better right there in that moment, 
I know for a fact it doesn't feel better when you lay your head on the pillow and think about your child's future and realize that he's not independent, that he can't really do these things without you. And you're already exhausted, already. Yesterday you were exhausted and you got up today already exhausted, not at your best, not able to give the lay talker what they need or even what you want to give them. Okay, that's why you're stuck. That's why you're struggling. That's why you dig in. Desperation, worry, acting out of a, a sense of those things takes you to plan A. Acting out of, I know my late talker is smart. I know what I can do. I have resources around me. I can take it easy and step by step by step. I promise you'll be happier when you lay your head on the pillow because you'll look back and see all the things that you did facilitate instead of focusing on all the things your child's not doing yet, okay? So it's time to get to work and facilitate those things your child's not doing yet. It's up to you. Nobody's gonna do it better than you. Nobody can. You're the best language facilitators. So I hope this mindset video helped you make some adjustments and keep you back on track. And if you need guidance, go ahead and give me a call. Okay, wavesofcommunication.com. Yeah, that's. I'll just share this real quick. I did get a comment from Raj earlier on another video. I didn't get a chance to do that. She asked me to pull a card for her. So I'm going to go ahead and you know who you are. Oops, it just popped right out. It's this one. Patterns keep me safe. Okay, so this is interesting how we got this card up in this video because I'll stick around for a couple minutes if you're watching and you want me to pull a card, make a comment right now. So for Raj, the thing is, Consistency is key, and it's a very fine line between obsession and control and consistency, right? If you are consistently connecting with your late talker and offering them the language models that they want to hear, you need to be doing it two to three hours every day. You need to be listening and watching them and observing their progress and helping them understand how to be independent with things. So this says behave consistently on the back. Late talkers rely on a daily schedule as well as the patterns of behavior in their caregivers to learn what help and support they can expect from you. She mentioned in her comment that she's already at level four, which means that her child is already at needs-based language and she's in the process of facilitating something more, something like conversational and storytelling and things like that. If your child's at level four, that means they can tell you everything they want to need and they can describe things, but they can't talk about their feelings and they don't initiate speech very well, only when they want something, right? So, Detail the order and duration of tasks. So again, this is how are you doing things? How are you facilitating? How are you doing things like that? Um, detail the order and duration of tasks for both jobs and free time. So this is what you do. Your child wants a little bit of structure to help them understand. I can't say this enough. It, it, this isn't throw the baby out with the bathwater and do nothing with your child and just follow them around and facilitate. You have to be in charge of the facilitation opportunities. They just have to be collaborative, okay? They just have to be collaborative. And with this privilege of you reading their mind, giving them what they want, responding to their requests, comes the responsibility of them initiating the request, cleaning up the thing. You know, it doesn't just happen on their whim. It happens when it's available, when you're available, like, you know, the time is right, all of those things, okay? So analyze your own behavior for recent changes to find the root of newer un unwanted behaviors. It could be that you got this card because you have been using the workbook, you have been behaving consistently, and that is the trick that's helping you, if I pulled this card for you if you're resonating with it, because it could be that you need to remember, we aren't sure the root of this message. I don't know your family. If your child is saying this, he's just saying patterns make me feel safe, meaning that I like the patterns you're giving me or I need more of them. You have to figure that message out in your own family. And it could be different for different people who are watching. Okay. So there's your card. Hey, Blondie says, can you pull a card? Absolutely. Let's go and pull one for you, Blondie. I see you. We'll pull one for you too. What does Blondie's son 
want to communicate with her because these are the messages from the lay talkers. Your son says, uh-oh, am I bothering you? I'm trying to get this because my lighting is over here. Am I bothering you? So this is a picture of a boy who's annoying his parents. And it says, set your limits. So perhaps there isn't enough structure and boundaries. And again, you are giving a little bit more than you should be, or your child needs or wants you to be giving. Maybe they want to be getting more independent. Late talkers play and experiment with sounds and noises over and over and over as they practice and balance feelings and entertain themselves. So it could be any one of those things. Why is your child doing the things over and over and over and over and over again? If it's annoying you, this repetitive behavior, it's because you're, it, it's intentional. Your late talker is trying to communicate a message to you to let you know they need something different. If you, it, because if they do, if they do a behavior and you respond to that behavior, then they learn they won't keep doing it. They learn that's their, that's their language. They know you understand just because you respond. With language facilitation, when you get a directive from your kid, open this, help me, give, come with me to the bathroom, you know, whatever they want you to do, you know, feed me, give me a snack, cuddle me, you know, play with me, whatever, they, all day long, they come to you to request these things. And depending on which angle you are as far as your facilitation if you've been prompting they will keep prompting you they'll prompt and prompt and prompt and prompt and prompt and do the same thing over and over again because that's what they've heard you do ask if you're asking the same questions over and over again if you're repeating over and over again these are just the kinds of things that can happen when your late talker starts bothering you if you are feeling bothered and if the late if you're not feeling bothered that's a problem because this late talker is doing things to wake you up and alert you pay attention to me i'm trying to communicate something really important to you and you're ignoring trying to change you're trying to make me forget you're trying to distract me away from what i want or something like that they will keep bothering you okay if you bother them maybe they're stuck in videos and you every 30 minutes you're trying to pull them off pull them off take them away take their stuff away from them use their stuff as you know like that lady who's helping her kid go to the bathroom by taking his toy away to make him go to the bathroom and giving him his toy back or his ipad or whatever to make them do things they're gonna they're start manipulate they they'll find you they learn how to push your buttons the same way you learn how to push theirs same okay that's what this is when kids bother you they are feeling bothered they're mirrors they're mirrors for you calmly remind the late talker of the real impact their play has on you okay oh you're trying to do this you're whatever you're making me exhausted you're doing whatever it might be intentional to bother you or it might be them practicing if it's self-talk that's annoying you that's your worry and fear about oh my god what's he doing why is he doing that that's what's bothering you he's not bothering you you're just bothered okay but this is all about a kid who's annoying a parent on purpose and all behaviors communication guys all behavior okay Offer daily opportunities where the late talker can be free and loud and noisy and whatever as they want. And you let them know this is the time. We're at the park. Inside voice, outside voice, all of that business. That's boundaries and rules and guidance and negotiation, like I talked about. Set your limits. Negotiate the things. That's how you get this thing going. Okay, let's see. I'm pulling those out so that we don't get them. Here's another one. Let's pull a card for you. I, I, you guys, I'm so proud of you for working so hard and showing up every week for these videos, d digging in every day with your kids. I know doing 1% every day to get to 100% after 100 days seems like a lot, a lot, a lot of waiting for things to happen. But I promise you, this is how it goes. This is how it goes. You have to wait for it to happen. You have to trust that what you're doing is working and not make it happen. You're not going to make anything happen. You're facilitators, guys. You are. I'm real proud of you. Aw, find the, my comfort zone. You guys want a little cuddling. They want to connect. Maybe they love it. Find me in my comfort zone. This is where your late talker loves. Look, it's another yellow. Reach and teach. 
Late talkers can listen and process speech models more easily when they feel safe and comfortable, okay? Ask if you may join the late talker while they're hanging out or enjoying themselves with an activity. If they're doing, so, ask if you can join them. Ask if you can go in there and, and cuddle with them, whatever, you know? Offer opportunities to join you in comforty things. Your kiddo wants that right now. Maybe it's super hot outside. You got your house really cold and you're, you know, with the AC on and you're bundled in, or maybe it's just too hot and you're out playing in the water, whatever you're doing, right? Offer these places of comfort, right? Because comfort isn't always just cuddly. Comfort is whatever you find comfort to be. If you're too hot, Comfort is a nice, cool shower. If you're too cold, comfort is a nice, warm blanket. If you're too, if people are too around, busy, comfort is a nice, quiet place. If you're bored, comfort is an event going out to explore. Okay, so find your late talker's comfort zone. It might not be a cuddly thing. It's all about this chain about connection. We connect here because we're both feeling cool now. We both were hot, and now we're cool because because we got in the cool thing. We both were cold and now we're nice and warm in our snuggly thing. Talk about that transition. Ask if you can join the late talker while they're hanging out or enjoying themselves. Isn't it interesting how we got similar things? And then show gratitude for the time that you spend together. Connecting over the little things that make you feel good. Oh, it feels so good that we're cool. We're playing in the water, doing all that. I love that. I love that. Okay. So Blondie says, true. He never bothers me. I just worry. I try not to. I'm following through your book. Thank you. That's it. So it's not, it's you stuck worrying. Is, uh, is that, is that something wrong? Is that something wrong? Is that something wrong? Quit looking at the lists. Quit looking at the, the red flags of what X, Y, Z, Z disorder is stop look at your child that's what he wants that's why he keeps doing these things to trigger you to pay attention and figure out why is this happening why is he doing this why is he not doing this why is he not connecting with me why is blah 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 blah, blah. start telling stories blondie i promise if you start connecting with your son and start telling him the stories of your life just talk about the things that you've done and not just what you did but how you did them and how they made you feel and what was the result i was so glad i was so hot and we went and played in the sprinkler and now i'm cool again right okay so, hey, Lori says, I love your card readings and astrological explanations. Oh, good. I'm glad because, I, like I said, I think that astrology, I'm not a real, I mean, I am literally my kitchen table astrology doing what I do. Oh, this is one flipped over. Let me show you what I know. I think you might have even got this card before, Lori. If not you, somebody else. Your late talker's brilliant. Your late talker knows things and wants to be a leader. Oh, that could be what's going on right now. We're getting into Leo season and Leo is the leader, the shiny, the, the, the performer, right? The one that's out. Look at me on videos. I'm a Leo rising and my Mercury is literally hitting that sun as it moved in there, lighting up my Mercury right now in Leo. And I'm like, Woo -hoo -hoo! and my Leo's conjunct with my sun. So I am, that's why this information's coming out so clearly because I'm literally channeling it through my Leo self. <laughs> I get emotional thinking about that. So it could be, maybe that's what's going on, Lori, right now with your late talker is he's feeling the shift like I am out of the dish rag, can cancer's dish rag feeling, oh, heavy feelings. What am I going to do about my feelings? Feelings, my feelings keep me from taking action and doing things. That that full moon, right? But the Pluto said, "Uh, uh, uh not this time. We're not going to cloak that massive Sagittarius full moon. We are going to get people to take action. No, push past the feelings. Feel the fear and do it anyway. That's the that's the avenue of what the." Astrology is telling everybody to do right now. Get excited about the change. Dig in and own it. Live it. Project it. Shine your light. That's what Leo is. Leo is the only uh, astrological sign that's ruled by the sun. The sun and the moon only rule one sign each. One Because other planets, they are, you know, boss and assistant boss and blah, 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 another. But the Leo is the sun. It's the lightest, brightest. That's why it's the performer, because they're the one on stage. What you're doing, 
And this is what's interesting about coming off of the astrology from the old one and from this full moon into this Leo season, this very active Leo season right now we got going on. That's why everybody's so hot, right? We got the sun is showing up saying we're lighting everything up and in light and heat, all that stuff going on, all the kudos to all you UK families. I hope you're playing in the sprinklers and staying cool any way you can. It's hot everywhere, but I know in UK you had a big, big point. Hopefully, I mean, everything's temporary. It'll pass to use these opportunities of problem solving to facilitate spoken language with your lay talker and learn from them. I bet your lay talker has solutions. These one, these kids that are super smart, these Einstein syndrome kids, right? She goes, look, he's a little Leo. Oh, that's it. Of course he's a Leo. Of course he's a Leo. His first phrases are all commands. <laughs> Look, this is how he's going to do it. Just like I'm out here telling you guys, you got to change. You cannot keep controlling these kids. They won't let you. This little Leo, he is going to be, it's going to be a great month for you. Ooh, I, get, I can't wait. Can't wait to hear your progress. So this is super fun, you guys. Thanks again for joining me on another Mindset Matters video with card pulling and astrology and a little bit of lecture and, and you know, ranting that I do on these mindset videos because your mindset is important. It's where you come from and your little guy, little girl who is just, they idolize you. They see you as the source, the literal light, their sun in their world. And now is your opportunity to own that. Be the source of learning. Don't control them. That's another sign. That's other stuff that's going on. This is allowing your child to shine and opening the stage so that they can bring out their language facilitation. You can bring out your language facilitation because you're on stage. They can bring out their speech because they're on stage. And then I can't wait to hear the show. Okay, everybody. Thanks again for joining me. Don't forget tomorrow, big, big video tomorrow where you're going to learn how to shift from plan A into plan B and get your kid independently talking, stopping these meltdowns, doing jobs, becoming trustworthy and making contracts where they start to be independent kids who share their ideas with you and grow and evolve as people, as humans that aren't controlled like we control animals and things like that. That's what that part A does, okay? Don't control your kid. They don't want it. They want to be Leos and share their wisdom with the world. So, all right, enough of that. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.